share uh, it's about the prepare ahead of time. How we should prepare, how you prepare for the, for the coming of Christ or your life. So before I go to our sermon this morning, I would like to share that next week we are going to have baptism. So if you're interested for baptism or rebaptism, let me know. Or if you want to study more, let me know. Uh, last week, I got a phone call from someone in Tulsa. He called me, Pastor, can I baptize? What? And he asked him a question, can, is, is it possible to baptize just one person or have to wait as a group? So I say, no, you don't, we don't have to wait. One person is okay, we can baptize one person. And I never know him, but he know me from maybe online or somewhere. And I asked him, where you get my number? Uh, he, he said he, his co-worker gave my number. So uh, he is planning to come. I asked him, do you want me to come over there or you want me to come here? And he said, it's okay, I will come here. So hopefully you will come here uh, this coming Friday. By I told him we have a Vesper service, 6.30 start. So hopefully he will be here. Friday, and then we are going to have baptism. So if you're interested, uh, willing to study and give your life for Jesus, uh, let me know, uh, or one of our elders, or the talk with our elders and deacons, and let me know we have to, uh, we are going to celebrate the, the baptism <clears throat> service next week. Okay, so... Let me, let me share. Uh, when, I, when I look at weather, I love to read the survivor story, right? How many of you like survivor story? So I would like to read with you, right? Read with you one of, one of the choices I have. Her name is Christina from Virginia. She experienced hurricane three times. What happened in 2003, in 2011, and 2018? She said, I have been through three major hurricanes that thrown up my area of Virginia pretty badly. My first lesson learned was what? Hurricane Isabel in 2003. Isabel really messed up. Area up in the northern next of Virginia, no power for how many days? Are you ready for 13 days? No heating? Maybe might not have stove, right? Many things could happen, right? Nowhere to get gas or ice. I will never forget the howling of the winds and thinking this will this ever stop. Many houses were lost into these two river. I don't know how to pronounce. Rappahannock and Potomac. Potomac during Isabel. You see many houses. Are you ready for that? We don't have river around here, but if something happened, are you ready? Some, if some bad thing happened, I don't know how you prepare for. We don't know. My next experience was Hurricane. Ernie, Ernie, a micro bus power, powerful wind came right across the street. It looked like someone's hand just cut a what? A swept right through the trees. The songs of that wind, it clips me out every time. No power again, how many days? Seven days. Last year, this is 2018, right? Uh, Hurricane Michael got us no power for how many days? Five days and many main roads washed out. Several roads was impassable until the, this past March. That is 2019. He wrote, she wrote this 2019, but that last hurricane happened in 2018. I do not play, oh, I do not play with this storm. Do not think just because you are not taking a direct hit that it cannot be destructive. So she said here, 
Prepare ahead of time. This is what she advised. What? One thing. Buy what? Buy lots of water. Fill up large basket with water to flush toilets. Buy batteries. Charcoal to cook for. Uh, to cook food. Table like sandwiches, food like peanut butter and jelly will help too. Based on her experience, also have paper plates and plastic utensils. Get baby wipes for personal hygiene for everyone, not just babies. For baby, fill your vehicle up with gas and remember your pets. Get extra pet food, litter, etc. Get your prescription and over-the-counter medicine ahead of time. And don't forget, you need a NOAA now. Weather radio when the power goes out to stay on top of things. Be prepared to be self-sustaining for days because you will be without power for days and possibly stand it for days. Do not ever wait till the last Minute to gather supplies, and if they tell you to evacuate, then what? Do it. So, my question is now for Christian. We, we, we told ourselves that we what we hold our Bible. This is our standard, and the uh, Bible tell us what. What the Bible said, For then shall be great tribulation such as was not seen, the beginning of the world to this time, nor, nor ever shall be. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, and the great prince would stand for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was seen. There was a nation even to that same times, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the, in the book. Matthew 24 verse 9, then shall they deliver you, deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hate of all nations for my name's sake. So my question is, are you prepared for that situation? Are you prepared for bad things? Not just bad things. Great tribulation, great wind, okay? spiritual wind could happen in our life. Are you ready? If your loved one just pass away, or if your loved one just against you, or fight you back. Are you ready? Are we prepared? Bad thing could happen to us. In the East Coast, they experience hurricane and storms, and in uh, Middle American, we also experience tornadoes, right? Earthquake in many places. So, how about in our spiritual life? Can we stand like Elijah when we just alone? Anyone else just laugh. Even his follower, his servant, Elijah, even his, ser uh, his servant left him at Bathsheba. He ran through the mountain. He stand. Sometimes it's good God didn't answer our prayer, right? Sometimes it's good. I learned from Elijah. Elijah, he pray under the tree, Lord, just take my, my life. I'm not better than my forefathers. I'm not better than that. Lord, just take me. But God has a plan for him. Better plan what? He took him to heaven, right? Sometimes God didn't answer our prayer because he has a better plan. But we have to, we have to go through that trials and difficult and challenges. By faith, Elijah is able, like Jim mentioned, James chapter 5, Elijah, just as a man as we are, when he prays, there's no rain. 
When he pray again, there's rain, right? Just as we are. So you line your stand, no matter how hardship, how difficult, how challenges and trial, he stand. How about us? Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said to his disciple, please pray, pray, pray for me before things happen, right? They, can, they couldn't pray just for one hour. Then what happened when Jesus was crucified on the cross? All the disciples left him. So how about now, my church, family, are we ready for something happen? What is our priority? What you put in your priority? Uh, John chapter 16 verse 33. This thing I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have what? Tribulation but be of good cheer. I have what? Overcome the world. So God said I have Jesus promised I have overcome the world. 2 Timothy 3 12 mentioned that what? Those who are making decision to live as Christ they will be what? Persecuted. Right? When we live rightly, the devil is angry. We know in Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 said, The dragons make will to the woman, right? To the offspring of the woman, those who keep what? The commandment and has the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the devil is ready to fight. Even the elect, he's trying to destroy are we ready? Are we prepared ahead of time? If something happened, are we just uh, are we just complaining God? Do you think we just complaining God or we keep standing like Joab? It's not easy for him to stand up, right? It's not easy. Suddenly, news after news. News is not good news for him. All bad news come directly. I don't know how many days it would take. I believe, let's say just within a day. When news come, everything destroy and blow by the wind, the strong winds, and all of his sons and children will die. He's still standing. He keeps standing. Because what? Because of his faith. He put his faith in Christ the, to the Redeemer. Job, Job chapter 19, verse 25, 26 said, I know my Redeemer live, right? No matter what happened with my physical, with my body, I will see him with my own eyes. He put his hope. Like Paul, no matter how hardship he faced, he is looking what? The glory that he is going to receive. Right when he compare, it's nothing. We, what we suffer is nothing when we compare when, what we are going to receive, the glory that we are going to receive. So Paul stand still. How about us? This, now is our time. Are we stand still, even when the strong wind, the number four hurricane hit, or number five? Can we stand? Paul, Romans chapter 12, verse 12 said, Rejoice in what? Hope. Patient in? Celebration. Continue instant in? Prayer. So this is how we are going to stand. Rejoice in hope. Paul, he wrote a letter. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, we know that rejoice always. Again, I say, rejoice. He wrote that letter in prison cells, right? He, he was in prison. He wrote to the people, rejoice. Can we rejoice when we lost our poverty, lost our loved one? Can we rejoice? Be patient in tribulation. So when we see a big picture, not the way we see, but the way God sees us, right? The way God sees us, we can still standing because Jesus said, 
Let not your heart be troubled. Just believe God and believe also in me. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God has a purpose, not for our bad, for our own good, right? God has a purpose. God said, I know, you don't know. I know I have a hope and a good purpose for you. Here, Revelation 3 verse 5 said, He that overcome, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the books of life, but I will confess his name before my fathers and before his angel. So what did Jesus say? He who overcome. Can we overcome the devil? How can we overcome the evil one? Through Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, Revelation 12 verse 11, they overcome him by the blood of Jesus and the testimony. Right? Those two things. The blood of Jesus and the testimony. Jesus paid his life for me. Right? That's why Paul said in Romans 8 verse 32, God give his only begotten son how much more he is going to give. The other things, right? All things. He put his trust in God. He who overcome. God want us to overcome. That's why God said, do not be afraid. I will be with you until the end, right? We can overcome the evil one. Revelation 7 verse 14. And I said unto him, sir, thou knowest, and he, shall, he said to me, these are they which come out of what? Great tribulation and have washed their robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. So do you know who these people are? The multitude, 144,000, right? When we, uh, when we study Revelation, Revelation chapter by chapter, do you know what is the last verse of chapter 6? What is the last, the last verse of chapter 6? Of Revelation, the last verse. Who shall stand, right? Because the devil is trying to scare us, persecute us. Bad thing will happen, who can stand? But Revelation 17, 7, 18, 144,000, they stand. We will be there, right? We will stand with Christ. These are they, they which come out of the great tribulation. We are not just take up like secret laughter. No, we will face. You see, Daniel, he faced the lion den. God put it. Shadak, Meshach, Abednego, they face to the final fire. God, Jesus is with them, right? Elijah, three and a half years, he faced all the challenges, difficult, even sometimes. When I think God is so funny, Be because I think, why God is so funny? This is why I think God is funny. Because King Ahab searching and looking for Elijah all over his kingdom. And God said, go and show up before the king. He's the person... <laughs> Too, too scared, right? Run away from the king and uh, the, Jezebel. And God said, go, go. Then Elijah said, it's better to send Obadiah to prepare, go to Obadiah, and I will ask Obadiah to tell the king I'm here. So he didn't go directly, right? But he go to Obadiah. He's a, he's a judge and a faithful, very committed to God. And Obadiah, he's scared. What? Did I did anything wrong? Why you said? So he is so scared. Then Obadiah went to King Ahab and he called Elijah is here, the one that you're looking for. He's here. And they encounter each other, right? The king said, What? It's because of you. And Elijah said, What? No, it's because of you and your fathers. You not keep the commandment of God. That's, you see, this will happen in the near future. The world is forgetting about the commandment of God. 
We are here to call, live up the character of Christ to show the world that God, he is our creator. He love and he care us. He give and powers to stand up no matter what happened. God give us power to boldness to declare the message that God has for us. Revelation 14, verse 6 to 12, what is that? What is the first angel message? Fear God and give glory to him. Fear God means what? According to Proverbs 8, 23, the wisdom, uh, Solomon said what? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Right? God is calling us to hate evil, to love the character of God, embrace the character of God, and give glory to God. By what we ate, what we do, what we drink, whatever we do, we are, we are here to call to glorify God by our actions. So we will overcome. One day we'll overcome. We know that Revelation chapter 12, what happened in heaven? Michael, Jesus, and his angel fought against the dragon, the sat Satan and the dragon fought, and his angel. You see two groups. Do you know who are the winner? Who is the winner? Michael and his angel, right? And that Michael, Jesus, is calling each and every one of us, come unto me, all who are heavy laden, I will give you rest. You will overcome the evil one. Do not let you not trouble. Do not panic. Come, just come. I will help you. I will walk you through that tribulation. Jesus is calling us. He even said what? I am tender, right? I'm sorry and tender. Jesus loves us. And he called us to overcome the evil one. And here, the good news for us, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is what? God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. You see, any situation, any challenges we face, we can handle it because Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit with us, right? Even, when, if, even if we need the angel, the angel is ministering for us. But will which the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So God will open a way for us. No matter what happened, God is there. He's standing by for us. He's standing by for us. Like I, I said several times, here in our, even in our city, we have what? Ambulance are ready, right? The fire departments were ready. If something happened, right? They are ready, police, they are ready. How much more our Father in heaven prepare for you in order to keep you, in order to save you? How much more our heavenly Father is preparing for us? We, we couldn't compare, right? That's why rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, right? Because we have a God who loves us. He gave his only begotten son. Here, we have to exempt ourselves now. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Exempt yourself. Why do you be in the faith? If the storm came, what would happen in, in my life, in our whole family life? Prove your own self. Know ye not your own self. How that Jesus Christ is in you. Except ye be reprobates. So prove yourself. Exempt yourself. Where are you in the faith? Galatians 4 verse, uh, 6 verse 4. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoice in himself alone and not in another's. Prove yourself. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Least that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. So we need to be careful 
our spiritual life. Do we really have that faith? The faith like Jesus, the faith like Abraham, faith like Isaac, Jacob, and Moses. In the Bible, uh, Hebrew chapter 11, talking about one of the mothers. Do you know whose mother it is? Moses' mothers, right? Moses' mothers. She stand up. She stand up and keep her son for three months. Do you have that faith? She had that faith. God will do something. You see, the miracle happened when she stand up and taking care of his son just for three months. Then God gives salary for taking care of his own sons for 12 years. Imagine. He keep his only his son and get paid by the the. The king, right? The king. He, he taking care of his own son and receive money. And he trained his son. So when we cannot see what would happen behind the scene, but God see the future. Just put our trust in him. God will open a will. When God open the a way, it's better than what we think, right? The the servant of Elisha, asking when they were in Dothan. The Assyrian came and surrounding them. He, the early morning, he is so scared. Then what? Elisha, Elisha, you see that thing happened. And he just what? Elisha pray. Then his eye open, and he see the host of the holy angels, the chariot of the angel surrounding them. Right? So just put our trust in God. God can open that we never seen. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. What is that? Call upon me. I will what? I will show you. The thing. The great thing that we. Do not know. Right? Just call. Just. Come to Jesus. Go to Jesus. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 7. Now I pray to God. That you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved. But that ye should do that which is honest, though we as be reprobates. First Corinthians 16 verse 13. Watch ye. Stand first in what? The faith. Quit you like men. Be what? Be strong. So watch. Stand first in faith and be strong. Like God said to Joshua, be strong. I will be with you as I be with Moses. Now God said to us, every single person, be strong as I be with Moses. Be strong as I be with Joshua. I will be with you. Be strong. Do not be discouraged. Just have courage and be strong. Now is the time for us. Why? Look at here. Do you love this text? Can we read it together? One, two, three, go. Confirming the soul of the disciple and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Right? We are living in the end time. Jesus is coming so soon. We will go through the, the great tribulations. Go through the promised land with Jesus. Second Corinthians 1 verse 24. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy, for by faith ye stand. So we stand because only faith. So faith, where faith came from? Romans chapter 10, right? Paul is talking about faith came from where? The hearing of the word, right? The more you study, the more you learn about God, you have more faith, right? The more you trust. He is worthy to worship. He is worthy to trust. Uh, last week, uh, my, I asked all of the, the students, just write. The attributes of God or who our God is. Then I give 20 minutes. 
There's a boy, there's five, there's a, a girl, there, about six. Yeah, right? I asked him. Before I asked him, I'm talking with who is God. Okay. God is good. God is great, awesome, and mighty, and powerful. So we discuss, and then now is your time. Just write it. I give 20 minutes and ask them at least 30 of his attribute or who God is. And the boys, they only get 20. They stagger up to 20. And the girls, they got 55, 80. And then they're asking five more minutes. So I give five more minutes and they get up to 83 and almost 100. So practice, right, who God is. God is my helper. God is my redeemer, right? Oh, Lord, you're so great and so good and so powerful, so strong. You're so rich. You love us so much. So write everything and you say it, repeat it, and you know who our God is. And he is worthy to trust, worthy to worship, right? He is overcomers. He is our redeemers. If you know who God is, you have that faith. When financial stagger, our God is rich. Generous, right? He's willing to take care of us. So, faith is important. In order to have faith, we have to study and talk with Him more and more. First Colossians 1 verse 27, To whom God would make known what is what? The riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. What? The hope of glory. Jesus in us. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Why we should be afraid, right? Nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. The hope of glory. Even our corruptible will destroy or perish. God will resurrect us into incorruptible. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that ye, being what? Rooted and grounded in love. We study this morning, right? Uh, Ephesians chapter 3. Being rooted and grounded in love. Do you know Christ dwell in our heart by faith? Uh, Ellen G. White, she said that when we came to church, we go with Jesus, Right? Everywhere we go, we go with Jesus. The Holy Angel is with us. The Holy Spirit with us. The problem is what? Every time we know uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, right? What is that? Ask, it will be given. No, we'll open. Seek, you'll find, right? So the problem we have is knock. Do you know how to knock Jesus? Do you know how to knock? What does knock mean? What is knock? We are good at asking and seek, maybe seeking, right? Knock. The problem we have is knock. Knock is knocking mean what? Asking his opinion, asking his permission, asking him. Advice, right? Like Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. What is that? I stand at the door and knock. God is waiting our willingness, permission in order to come to us. So before we do something, we have to knock God. Lord, what you want me to do? Is this what you want me to do? Right? We have to talk with God. Knocking means what? Asking advice or permission or waiting from God before something. We just drag him, Lord, I'm here, I'm starting my job, please be with me, protect me from any hurt, any, anything, right? We're just asking, not asking, command him to do something, right? They don't, just surrender to his will. Uh, here, one of my favorite one too, he Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have, for he has said, what? I will never leave you and nor forsake you. So God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Just be content with 
what you have. You see, our oh God, He can multiply five roofs and two fishes, feeding five thousand, right? It's easy. Be, just be content with what you have, right? Nothing to fear. If you worry about for what you eat, for closing, just read Matthew chapter 6. Again and again, God said, He's taking care, even the bird, the little bird, He's taking care. How much more we are worthy, right? God is taking care of us. I will never leave you. If you have faith, if we have faith, we just stand. We will stand up. And verse 6, so that we may bully, what? Say what? Can you, are you really experienced the Lord is your helper? The Lord is my helper and I will fear what men shall do unto me. This is what the word of Paul, it can be your words, Right? I will not fear what men shall do to me. I will not fear what the government, I will not fear what the evil one, what the chiefs of the evil one, I will not fear. Paul said in Romans 8 verse 31, If God is for us, who can be against us? Why? He is our helper. He said, I will never leave you and nor forsake you. And he also said what? I have loved you with an everlasting love. He loves us. Then let's continue. Paul said in Romans 8 verse 33, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tabulation? This is one of the, the plan that the, uh, Satan has, right? Tabulation, distress, persecution, famines, nakedness, and pears and sword. Nee, in all these things, we are more than what? Conquerors. Through him that love us. We overcome because of the blood of Jesus and the testimony that we have. Right? No. Verse 38. I persuade thee, neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor prosperity, nor power, nor all things present, nor all things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Is this that what we are crying? Can we stand? I would like to close with this. Do you know what is this building? Does anyone know this building? How about this? You know, these two, Dr. Rabon Elisky and his uncle, uh, Rossi King, they built this, uh, their building three story back in 2017. And they prepare for something could happen. This is in uh, one of the uh, Florida, a Mexico, Mexico, what? Uh, Mexico Bridge, Mexico Bridge, uh, the panhandle of Florida, uh, uh, down below Tallahassee, down below there. So they built this house because Back in two, uh, 1992, there was a hurricane happened. So the, the state government requires if you build in that area, you have to build strong enough. If the wind can hit up to 120 miles per hour, could stand up. So they have a building code, right? You have to build. It could, even could stand, even though the wind is strong enough, 120. So... They built this house, instead of 120 miles per hour, they built. Even the hurricane hit 240 to 250, so they prepared. In, the government requires 120 miles per hour. They built it for what? 240 or 50, the, double it, right? More than, yeah, about double it. So they built it. The... This house, even the category four hit that area, they think that this building will stand. 
So this is how they built. This is how they built the inside and the outside. Uh, they, the, the building codes require to the parts dip up to uh, 20, 28, but they dig it up to 40, 40 or 50, right? Strong. The, the wall, one, one foot thick, the concrete. So they, you can go get it, you can search it. They, they build it because they know what? The storm will come. They know the storm will come. They build it. They prepare for it. So how much more we have to prepare? The Bible said great tribulation will come. The devil will come, even the elect he's trying to deceive, right? We know that. So actually, just not even uh, a year after. This is, they built 2017, finished. This is 2018, October 10. 10-10, 2018. Hurricane category 4 hits. You know, category 4 is 155 miles per hour. The building what? Stood. Why? Prepare ahead of time, right? Prepare ahead of time. I know there are many people when bad things happen, they just cry, cry, cry all day long. Don't even to go back to church. They stop praying because they not prepare for hardship, right? So they this building stand. It's building stand up. Interesting here. Look at the next picture. Do you see behind the building? Just behind the building, that building, not even follow the building code. They just built a regular one. Because of the sand, sand spring, this building called Sand Palace. Because of Sand Palace building, behind the building stood. It could happen because of your faithfulness, because of your love, God. Someone will stand behind you. Someone. Maybe your loved one, maybe your family. It could happen. We might not see from, uh, from the, the phone side, from in front of it, right? But when we look from the back, that building stand. Are we prepared for the coming storm? Spiritual storm. Do you think we, do you think we can handle it? Without Christ, it's impossible. John, chapter fifteen, verse five. Jesus said, "Without me, you can do nothing." But with God, all things are possible. Right? With God, God said, "Come, come," and He knocked the door before the, the, the time of trouble come. What Christina said. Prepare ahead of times, right? Prepare ahead of time. And God also knocking our door. Allow him to come in so that we can face any challenges. Like Paul said, no, persecu no one can separate us from the love of God. Even persecution, distress, you name it. No one, right? They stood up because they prepare ahead of time. It is time for us to prepare. No matter what challenges we might face, we will stand up. Like I, I, I think I said one time, Al Smacky, he, <coughs> he, meant, <coughs> he mentioned, if you prepare for emergency, never come. It will never come. If you prepare, let's say if something happened, if my vehicle broke, I bought insurance, I have extra money to save it for. If suddenly something happened, it will, it will take care, right? If something bad happened, I'm prepared it. So not emergency. You prepare everything. So just prepare before ahead of time. Get 
right acquainted with Jesus. Pray for your loved one. Pray for yourself and examine yourself. You are whether you are in faith or not. Now is the time because Jesus is coming soon. The devil knows that he has only a short time, right? Well, Peter said in First Peter five verse eight, he came as a roaring lion, right? He come to devour us, but no matter who we are, we are stand up because we have the word of God. We read it every single morning. We read it every evening. We Digest it all day long. The promise of God, the message that we have, Jesus died. All the promise that He had, all the word that we read, digest it, read it, remind yourself. That will keep you safe. That's why David said, "I hid your word in my mind so that I will not sin against you." Right. We will overcome the world one day. We will shout and joy. Oh, this is the God that we've been waiting. Isaiah 25 verse 9. Jesus will come and say, "My faithful servant, come and joy." We are going to eat the Lord's supper, the wedding supper. Are are you ready for His soon coming? Like Luke said in Acts chapter 14:22. We will go through the great tribulation and enter into the kingdom of God because of the blood of Jesus. As long as you live up, Jesus, by what you are doing, by what you ate, by what you ding, drink, live up Christ, then He will keep you safe. I love what what the devil said, what Satan said to God. You keep him. You you keep Job. He cannot touch, right? Also, God can keep us, surrounding us with His love and with His chariots and mighty angel. The devil could not touch us. It could happen. He love us so much. Second Peter three verse nine. He he. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone repentant to be saved. Jesus is ready to come and take us home. So shall we all stand and sing? Where is your anchor hole? In the storm of life, are you ready? Are you prepared for that storm?